Now, he may be wearing blue, but he is definitely not here with any Monday blues. Chukudi is here to give us everything that's been going on in the policy over the past uh, two or three days over the weekend and catch up on all the trending news. How are you doing today? I'm very, very fine, ladies. Do you like my intro for you? Yes. No man, Monday blues, even wonderful, though you're wearing wonderful blue. Wonderful introduction. <laughs> but I think um, you should give me a compliment. Go you for look, it, you, you look like, you know, you look like today bread. Yeah. You are so fresh. The morning dew is competing with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Best things in sliced bread. The only thing I just need now is... Uh, <laughs> Something that can give me confidence. EG. <laughs> That's not EG. No, no, morning. Sound of alert. <laughs> yes. Morning. You haven't told us Happy New Week. Yes, ladies. Happy New Week. week. And interestingly, this is the last Monday in, in the, the month, month of, of July. July and and the I mean, March is in two days. Sorry, August. August. We're marching into August in two days. Yeah. Now, you would recall that there was a lot of, you know, there was a flurry of activities with respect to getting into the second half of 2018. But then, it's important that we lead our lives one day at a time, understanding that, you know, life is not about what you bring into it. Life is about the impact you make in the lives of other people. For mm. example, people want to, you know, live in choice apartments, drive fancy cars. I mean, everybody loves that. But the truth is, the lasting impression that you make in the life of somebody else is one thing you would be remembered for. Absolutely. Now, it's also important to know that, you know, nothing is as valuable as a sincere smile as a kind compliment and this happiness you know there are people that when they are around you you just feel this happiness inside you. like you what? whenever you're around oh us we actually God. feel this certain sense warmth. of warmth warmth exactly warmth. flowing through you but then again you know for every nigerian woman forget the warmth and everything that flows through you <laughs> there's no money <laughs> <laughs> no you can't. You don't you be like that can't. you don't be like that you can't say, say that. that exactly not all of us are driven by money but that is not the focus of our conversation. Mm -hmm. We are going to ask you to give you very quickly in 10 seconds a shout out to, you know, from your friends, any of your friends who you feel has made a positive impact in your life. I'm very, very picky about friends. I, I play with people. I get along well. But if you must be my friend, you must make an impact in my life. So if I go over their names, it will look like, you know, disrespect. Ah. Because I might miss certain people. Baba is a, a politician. He's a litany of good people. Baba is actually such but a the politician. Truth is, <laughs> everybody that has touched my life positively and has added value to my life, I really appreciate. I, I mean, you know who you are. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that all these demons do when they have you like know. five girlfriends. I'm sending a shout out to my girlfriend. You know who you, you know are. You know who you are. I'm I telling you. Five girls are there thinking, oh, oh thank you, talking babe. about me. <laughs> Indeed. Please, let's just move over to our very first story, Chukudi. 121 Nigerians killed in South Africa, yet federal government isn't proactive. This was said by Mr. Femi Falana, ASN, who has criticized the federal government for allegedly not taking steps to the extrajudicial killings of Nigerians in South Africa. In a statement on Sunday, Falana said, the government, quote, we quote, has not gone beyond the regular condemnation of the killings, whilst also accusing the South African government of inaction. At least 121 Nigerians are reported to have been killed in South Africa in the past 18 months, usually in xenophobic attacks, the most recent being Chibu Zonwankwo, who was murdered last week. He said despite the killings, governments of Nigeria and South Africa have deliberately refused to accept the, the jurisdictional competence of the African Court on Human and People's Rights by making a declaration in line with Article 34, subsection 6 of the Protocol for the Establishment of the Courts. It's most unfortunate that, you know, Nigerians lose their lives in their numbers, not just in South Africa, but everywhere across the globe. But it is heartbreaking that, you know, a country like South Africa that we share rich historical ties with, you know, you would have people treat Nigerians this way. 121 in 2017, 2018 alone is like one Nigerian in 3.05 days. What does that tell you? Now, we need to do a whole lot more to protect Nigerians. Whether you like it or not, Nigerians are ingenious people, very, very creative, and you would find us anywhere in the world. Now, just like you have good people, you also have bad people. But you must ensure that you take advantage of your system so that people who are willing to contribute their quota to nation building and national development, wherever they find themselves, will thrive. And those unscrupulous elements that are going about causing trouble, you check these people. It is most unfortunate that every time we talk about this and the government has shown an inaction to act on this matter. And it is really very, very unfortunate that, you know, the South African government had always looked the other way. Mm -hmm. Anybody that is conversant with the Nigeria history, sorry, Nigeria-South Africa historical tie will know that we played a critical role in the struggle against apartheid, whether economic, whether, you know, um, physical, 
whether political, we tried our best to be at the forefront. In fact, there was a time that Africa was the centerpiece of Nigeria's foreign policy, and South Africa ranked highest in all that we did. We gave them money. Now, if we are faced with such a situation where Nigerians are dying in their numbers, and the only excuse is, oh, they are drug dealers, they are this, they are that, it's a problem. And the government of Nigeria, I don't understand. But then you begin to ask yourself, what is the value of the Nigerian life? People are dying like, I don't want to use any derogatory I want to say term. that we're complaining about the lives of Nigerians abroad. Let's talk about the Nigerians, lives of Nigerians in Nigeria. Very unfortunate. We're seeing killings in the north, we're seeing killings in the south, and it's just as if people are saying, enough is not being done. We need war. We need to put a premium but on the lives of one Nigerian. This is also what happens when you look at societal values and you realize the values are so misplaced because the average Nigerian, first of all, does not even have the historical education that Chukudi has to even understand what exactly is going on in South Africa. Before you move to a country, know that country's history too. A lot of the people that are carrying out these xenophobic attacks in South Africa are people who are raised under a Bantu education system. They see a bunch of Nigerians coming into their country and all they feel is anger. You're we, that we cannot our, get our, job. Our, we, our that employment they are angry. There are 5,000 doctors, Nigerian doctors in South Africa today. We were just speaking about this on radio when? Two days or four days ago. The problem is incessant because of South Africa's history. And what needs to be done now, right, is for the government to really go and pressurize the South African government to do something to protect the citizens. Where are the ambassadors that we have for Nigeria in South Africa? What is being done? 121 is horrible. It is literally sickening. Very true. And I think that, you know, the Nigerian government and the South African government must play a very important role in trying to address the problems. Because the truth is, people look at a situation and feel that they are oppressed. And when you come into their society, you take advantage of it. But that is no excuse. I recall one major attack that happened, I think, over a year ago. Mm. A Nigerian, you know, a, a Nigerian that had a thriving mechanic workshop in South Africa. You know, these guys just got into his workshop, you know, set the cars ablaze. They just wanted to kill him. Now, the truth is, forgetting, you know, forget whether they had this educational system. The government needs to do a whole lot more. I mean, look at Jacob Zuma, immediate past president of South Africa. This is somebody who stole the country blind. I mean, he's in court, innocent or proving guilty. Or the, but the truth is, sometimes when you look at the suffering of the average South African, and how they vent this anger and frustration on the average Nigerian. It is not even as a result of what the Nigerian does. It exactly. is a product of their what society. They are, exactly. they are They're literally a product of their environment. These are people who have had nothing their entire lives. They see Nigerians coming in that have opportunities that they can't even dream of. It's the same of. way Nigerians also get upset when we feel like foreigners are coming yep. into Nigeria to you know, get the premium jobs. We're just not as violent as they are. We would not go out of our way to burn down your business or kill you. I think also we need to reiterate today of all days the importance of, you know, fighting against human trafficking. We find that in modern day, it's modern day slavery. We still see situations like that. Irrespective of the fact that we're talking about South Africa and what's going on now, there's still some people that you tell them, come and go to South Africa to go and hustle and they'll say, yes, I'm ready. And you Take know why? Along. It's the mindset. You're even talking about South Africa. I mean, there are people who still go to Libya in droves mm -hmm. and in Libya it is clear that there are certain people who engage criminal bands that engage in human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth is, we must also correct this mindset of now who then catch, now be thief, or it is not my portion, or it is well. If we carry on with that particular mindset, we're going to keep getting into trouble. Now, what we must do as Nigerians is to hold our government responsible and accountable. Nigeria is a country that is so abundantly blessed with human and natural resources. All we need to do is get the right sets of leaders. People who have vision, who are responsible, who are competent and very creative. And these people are going to preside over the administrative affairs of state and put Nigeria on the right path. And it is most unfortunate that, like I always insist, people that cannot become class captain in a very good secondary school preside over our administrative affairs and these people just run the country aground. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.